Volvo's software meltdown. Can they win back driver's trust? Hey there, EV lovers. Hussein here, back on EVpedia, the channel where we take the fast lane straight into the heart of the electric revolution. Before we get rolling, quick but important note. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes only, protected under fair use. Now, let me kick things off with a little humor. You know, trusting buggy car software is kind of like relying on your GPS in airplane mode. It looks smart, but it's not going to take you anywhere. Speaking of trust, here's my question for you. Do you think Volvo can really regain customer trust after so many failed software promises? Or is the damage permanent? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I'll be reading them all. And while you're at it, let's set ourselves a high voltage challenge. 10,000 likes and 1,000 comments this week. Oh, and don't forget to hit that new hype button down in the comments. It's free, it's fun, and it boosts EVpedia higher on YouTube's leaderboard. Let's show the world the power of this community. Now, let's dive straight into today's story. After the troubled launch of the EX90, Volvo has admitted it stumbled badly with its software. The company now says a heavily upgraded software stack is finally on the way to fix the nightmare. When it comes to software and EVs, automakers usually fall into three categories. At the top of the hill, leading the charge are Tesla and Rivian, whose vehicles set the benchmark for seamless, smart in-car tech. Next, we have the legacy automakers like General Motors and Volkswagen, trying hard, tripping often, but still pushing forward. And then there are the laggards brands like Toyota and Stellantis that seem happy coasting on gas cars and hybrids, dipping just enough into EVs to stay in the conversation. Volvo sits right in the middle, trying, failing, and trying again. The Volvo EX90 was supposed to be the crown jewel of their electric transformation. Priced north of $82,000, this luxury SUV promised advanced tech, cutting-edge software, and a glimpse of Volvo's EV future. Instead, the rollout was delayed by over a year due to software gremlins. And when the car finally hit the road, the glitches came along for the ride. Owners reported digital keys that didn't unlock their cars, infotainment screens that froze or went blank, and air conditioning that gave up on hot days. Some even described terrifying highway power losses. Evpedia's own first drive found the car unfinished, lacking big ticket features like Apple CarPlay, smart charging, and advanced driver assistance. All this came just as Volvo's global sales were falling, with stiff competition in Europe and China and political roadblocks in the US. In a rare moment of corporate humility, Volvo executives sat down with the press including EVpedia, to admit the problems. Chief Engineering and Technology Officer Anders Bell openly apologized to customers, saying, Sorry to those who lost trust. We are working super hard to win it back. Bell isn't a newcomer to this kind of challenge. He spent years at Tesla leading engineering before returning to Volvo. Now he's betting his career on fixing the company's broken approach. So where did things go wrong? For decades, Volvo relied on domain-based systems, separate computers and code stitched together from dozens of suppliers. One computer ran the infotainment, another controlled climate, another handled braking. The automaker's job was to make them all talk to each other, and that complexity made bugs almost inevitable. A failure in one box could bring down the entire digital house of cards. This patchwork approach haunted many automakers, not just Volvo. Tesla and Rivian faced early software meltdowns too. GM had to issue a stop sale for its Blazor EV after software glitches stranded drivers. The problem isn't unique, but the timing for Volvo couldn't be worse. Now, Volvo is moving to a new in-house software system. Instead of juggling dozens of boxes from suppliers, they're building what they call the Superset Tech Stack. It's a unified system, developed internally, that can be used across multiple cars. 
functions will be written once and then adapted for different models like the EX90, EX60, ES90, and Polestar 3. That means smoother updates, fewer bugs, and fixes delivered over the air instead of in workshops. In June, Volvo pushed out a major over the air update, version 1.3.18. It made digital keys more reliable and improved system stability. But customers are still reporting problems, from speed limit detection bugs to one pedal driving issues to inconsistent internet. Even Consumer Reports slammed the EX90, saying it never should have gone on sale in such a buggy state. Bell insists better days are just ahead. In two weeks, another major update will roll out, bringing improvements across everything. More importantly, future Volvos will benefit from a zonal architecture. Fewer, more powerful computers instead of dozens of weak ones. For the EX90, this means a big hardware refresh too. By 2026, the SUV will come with an upgraded NVIDIA Drive AGX Orin-based computer, paired with active LiDAR mounted above the windshield. This will power more advanced driver assistance, including emergency steering, nighttime pedestrian detection, and collision avoidance. Current 2025 owners won't be left behind. They'll get a free computer upgrade at service centers, activating the LiDAR their cars already have. Bell summed it up perfectly. The software-defined vehicle is, in many ways, a more profound change than electrification. In other words, getting software right may be even harder and more important than swapping engines for batteries. And that brings us back to our question. Can Volvo win back customer trust? The honest answer is yes, but only if these fixes truly deliver. Personally, I think Volvo has the engineering talent to pull it off, but they can't afford another misstep. Customers who paid $82,000 for an SUV expect more than promises. They expect perfection. Now, what do you think? Would you give Volvo another chance? Or is your trust gone for good? Share your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear them. And here's a fun auto fact to close us out. Did you know that the very first car with onboard computer diagnostics appeared way back in 1968? It was the Volkswagen Type 3, using Bosch's Digitronic fuel injection system. In many ways, it laid the foundation for the connected cars we drive today. Thank you for sticking with EVpedia through this story. If you enjoyed it, please help us hit our 10,000 like and 1,000 comment goal. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share this with your EV loving friends. And don't forget to hype the video. It's quick, free, and helps our community grow stronger. Stay charged, and I'll see you in the next one.